So thank you, uh, James, for coming to Denmark and uh, for doing this uh, interview with uh, Conspiration. Uh, you at the Open Mind Conference 2017, and uh, you did a lecture yesterday about the echoes of World War One. How do you think? Uh, you know, how did you feel the, the lecture went? I was quite pleased with the way the lecture came together. In fact, it's something that I've found many times over the years, is when I choose a subject to, that I want to talk about, it seems that the material kind of happens after the point that I choose about it, but before I talk, talk about that subject. And this is one of those cases where I chose this topic several months ago. It's something that I've been thinking about and wanted to talk about since at least 2014, which was the centenary of World War I. And I've been thinking about the, uh, the par parallels between the build-up to World War I and what's happening right now between the U.S. and China for that time period. And so I've, I decided several months ago that I was going to give this talk on that subject. And then since then, I mean, even since that point, there's been books published and lots of uh, Henry Kissinger and David Atreus and Samantha Power and all these people talking about this subject. So clearly there's something to it. And uh, so I'm glad that I talked about it and I think it came together quite well. Yeah, it was a, a, a great lecture. Now, uh, maybe I, I should ask you if you could give us just a quick sum up of what was the lecture about? So essentially I'm looking at the parallels between the pre-World World War I period and what we're living through today and the way that the rising power of Germany was viewed as a threat by the ruling power of the British Empire and so what the British Empire and the machinations that it did to try to confront that rising power threat and what's happening today with the rising power of China and uh, the ruling power of the American Empire and looking at the, the fact that there's a lot of parallels that um, one can draw and as I say high-level globalists are talking about those parallels today and talking about the Thucydides trap and other things so it's an interesting um, thing to look at just from that perspective but of course the broader perspective that I wanted to bring to it is that World War One was essentially it was an engineered conflict that we've been lied to or at least not told the all the truth about um, for the past century it's most people will learn about it in school but not really understand it there was a war it just kind of happened um, and in the same way I think World War three whatever that means and whatever way that comes together is going to be a similarly engineered conflict and I wanted to bring that point across and you did that excellently and I hope people will go to Gaia TV DK and, and see your lecture there um, it's your first time in Denmark yes. how do you uh, like being here at the Open Mind Conference uh, 2017 it's been a wonderful experience so far all I've experienced so far is the conference <laughs> um, and that's probably all the time that I have I'd love to see a little bit more of Denmark itself but uh, but no all the people I've met here have been extremely warm and it's been a really nice um, vibe it's a nice environment because yeah. everyone I think is uh, is interesting and interested and working on the same types of problems and issues and so there's a I mean an interesting conversation around every corner here and it's great to hear and the one thing that happened in Denmark this year it was uh, that we got a new uh, new media uh, here called the uh, conspiration we have uh, four numbers out now and uh, I'm the chief editor of uh, these magazines and I, I I gave you these magazines yesterday and uh, I asked you if you would look into them and, and give me a, a thought about this new media. Uh, so what do you think about the uh, conspiracy? And well, you can, of course I have to say you can't read it in <laughs> yeah. Danish and, uh, and uh, you will of course uh, talk English and maybe it's Japanese but, but not Danish. So, but to, you could look at the pictures, you could see the subjects, so yes, yes, what, yes. What, uh, right. what, what do you Well think? of course yes, I can't read uh, every article, but um, I think the thing that's most exciting about a media like this is that I think in the age of the internet people are turning to more and more online based information. as as of course I mean it's a great and efficient and easy way to get information out but there is something about tangible printed physical information that is a actually tangible it's something that people can hold and flip through and have on their desk or whatever that has a physical presence to it that I think is being lost in the internet age um, to our detriment and I think it's important to have physical alternatives to um, uh, this media because uh, 
uh, first of all, it's uncensorable. Once it's out there, it's out there. Um, whereas on the internet, of course, they can pull websites or whatever. And secondly, it is that kind of thing that, I mean, it, this will reach people that a website won't necessarily reach. Or people sometimes even just take information that is on the printed page more seriously. It's also extremely high quality production. This is a slick magazine. And uh, I think that comes across, uh, again, people have been programmed to, in the mainstream media sense, well, this, this looks and feels and smells and is, is just like that. So I think it's important that alternative media does this. And I'm glad to see that this is happening in Denmark and hopefully other places besides. Yeah, hopefully we can get some translations and get it out in other, yeah. other countries. And only we thought about Scandinavia, but hopefully English-speaking countries as well. Well, thank you, James, and uh, thank you again for lecture yesterday and uh, for giving me your thoughts about the magazine and Open Mind Conference. Excellent. Thank you.